Hey there, in this video we are going to look at how to use trapezoids to approximate definite integrals. And there's even going to be a few little extra bits connecting back to the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now we're going to look again at uh, estimating areas, but this time we're going to use a different shape here, a different method. We're going to use trapezoids. Now when I say the word trapezoid, you're probably picturing that, the classic isosceles trapezoid. What we're going to use is something that looks more like that. They're both trapezoids. They both have one pair of parallel sides. One's just kind of tipped up on its side and has these two sides not symmetric on either side. What we do need to know before we start estimating areas with this is how do you find the area of a trapezoid? And it's easier to see how to do it with this one. What we need to do here is just imagine that we can call this, let's say, height number one, the height on the left of the thing, and height number two, and then we have the width here. The area of that thing is going to be the same as the area if this were a rectangle that was kind of halfway in between those two. In other words, the average height. If you just took this piece and chucked it down there and filled that in, you'd have this rectangle there. So the formula for that, to work that out, is the average height of the two, height 1 plus height 2, divided by 2, and then that times the width. That gives you the area of that rectangle. That works for this as well. You may have seen a formula that looks like that before for this standard trapezoid, and it might have said something like base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 times the height. Same method, same formula. So we're going to use this idea to estimate some areas. Okay, first we're going to look at something hopefully fairly straightforward, just trying to find the area under this function here between 0 and 3. So if we draw a quick graph of that, just the parabola that shifted up one. So if I am drawing it, I'm going to use those points right there. It looks something like that. This says use a trapezoidal approximation with three subintervals. So if the interval we're looking at is from 0 to 3, that's where we want to find the area. Three subintervals, each one is 1 in width. So we're going to draw some trapezoids that are each one wide and then as high as they need to be to fit on that graph. So the first one, the bottom is there and it's going to go up to the curve there. And it's just going to be straight along there. It's going to be ever so slightly that red line, not that you can tell from my drawing, but the red lines will be slightly above the curve. And the same thing goes here if we draw one here. Now again, it's ever so slightly above that one. It's pretty hard to tell. And then the last one here. So the area of each of those trapezoids, if we're going to work this out. So this integral here is going to be roughly equal to the area of the first one, which is going to be the function value at 0 plus the function value at 1 divided by 2. That's the average height. And then times the width, the width I'm just going to call delta x, which is 1 in this case, but I'll put it in there anyways. Plus we're going to have f at 1 plus f at 2 divided by 2 times delta x. And then the last one, the function value at 2, the height at 2, plus the height at 3 divided by 2, and then times the, the width of that one. Now, what people do to simplify the calculation here is you could work out each of these individually and then add them all together. But to simplify it, since each one is divided by 2 and multiplied by delta x, the simpler thing to do is to factor that out first. You can factor it out of each of the three terms and then write it once at the beginning and do it last and that'll greatly simplify your calculation. So if we write it like that, we're going to have delta x divided by 2. And then we're going to have this and this and this. So we're going to have f at 0 plus f at 1 plus f at 1 plus f at 2 plus f at 2 plus f at 3, the last one there. Now, just to make it clear why we have two of those and two of those is because they each appear in two different terms, except for the last two only appear once. Now, if you wanted to simplify it even more, 
Now you wouldn't write this all every time you do this, but to try and develop the idea here, I think it's helpful to see. The simpler way to write that would of course be f at zero plus two times f at one plus two times f at two plus f at three. And again, this is just because the first one's in there once. It's in the first trapezoid, f at zero plus f at one divided by two. And the second trapezoid, f at one plus f at two divided by two. And that third one, f at two plus f at three divided by two. So hopefully that makes some sense to you. Once you've got that, it's as simple as putting the numbers in there. Delta X here is one. So this is just gonna be half. And this is gonna be the height on the left of the first trapezoid there. That height right there is one. And we want two times the next height is this height right here, which is two. And then the next one we want two times that third height there, which is five. And then the last height, which is 10. Oh, if you work that out, that value works out to, this whole thing in here works out to, you have 25. So 25 over two, or 12.5. So that's an approximation of that area. Now, again, if you can visualize, this diagram's not the greatest, but if you can visualize, in theory, the straight red line of the top of the trapezoid is slightly higher than the curve of that parabola. So this value here is gonna be slightly more than it is in reality. Now, as we know, you already, hopefully, know how you can find this two other ways here, which we'll do right now to check. First of all, we will use numerical integration on a graphing calculator. All right, so we want to find that numerical integration here. Math down to number nine, or go up the, the bottom way, the shortcut. We want zero to three. We want x squared plus one, and we want that all to be in relation to x, and that is gonna give us 12, right? So just less than the value we thought, which kind of makes sense when you think about that graph. And then if we're gonna use the fundamental theorem of calculus to do this using an antiderivative, if we want the integral from zero to three of x squared plus one, we're gonna use an antiderivative of x squared plus one. So in other words, an antiderivative, the simplest one is one third x cubed plus x. And we're gonna evaluate that from zero to three. Zero, three, subtract the two of them. So we have one third three cubed plus three minus, well, this is gonna be zero, but one third zero cubed plus zero. So if we work that out, we have 27 divided by three, nine. This is nine plus three is 12. 12 minus zero is 12. So it gives you that same number. All right. We're going to move on now to a second example that's a contextual one and involves some data, not a given function here. So in this situation, we have a metal wire that's heated at one end and the wire is eight centimeters long. So at the end that you're heating, the temperature is the highest. So zero centimeters, X is going to be the distance away from the end that you're heating and the temperature is 100 there. And then the farther along the wire you go, the lower the temperature gets. But what we're gonna look at here is we're gonna try and work out the average temperature of the wire overall, of the, the average temperature in the wire. It's higher at one end, lower at the other end. What's the average temperature? And what you'll notice here, first of all, as I said, we don't have a function that we're given. We only have data. So we're gonna use data to work this out. And you'll notice that the intervals here are not the same space apart. And we're gonna incorporate that into what we do. So it probably helps to see what that data looks like on a grid. So to see our graph, we need to start by plotting those five points. So as I said, not equally spaced out, nor is there a function that we're gonna be able to use to connect all those things. Then we'll visualize some trapezoids that are set to match those points. Now to find the average temperature in the wire, we're not just gonna add those five numbers together and divide by five or something like that because these aren't all equally spaced. So to find it, we need to use the average value theorem that involves an integral expression. And so what that is basically is equalizing all that area across here into a rectangle 
and then that's what our average value is. So it's going to be somewhere in there. And to find that then we need to take, we need to find that area, which we're going to do by saying this is our integral from 0 to 8, the total length of the wire. And we can just write t of x here because that's our function, dx. And then we need to divide that by the width of the interval by 8, right? Once we know the total area there, we'll divide it by 8. So we're going to put 1 8th. And what we're working out here is the average temperature. We'll call it T average. That's what we need to work out right now. So we're going to do that by estimating because when all you have is data, there's no function to fall back on unless you try and fit a function to it. But for what we're doing, we're just going to use the data and uh, work out the areas that way. So that average temperature, uh, an approximation. So it's going to be approximately equal to, first of all, we need our 1 8th here. And we'll write the area of that first trapezoid, the first subinterval there. So it's the height on the right, 100, plus the height on the left, which is 95. And it's divided by 2 and times the width, 1. And we're going to add the second trapezoid there, that one. That is 95 on the right, on the left, I mean, plus 70 on the right, divided by 2 times the width of that one is 4. Now, before I'm finished here, you might be saying, well, how come you don't do the, the factoring it out and simplifying it like you did for the first example and put the, put the divided by 2 out here and put the, uh, the other stuff out there? I could put the divided by 2. They're all going to have a divided by 2, but I can't factor out the, the width like I did in the first one. Keys, the, these are all different. They all have different widths, so I can't use that kind of simplified shortcut formula there. So, so for what I'm doing, I'll leave the 2 in there as well. I'll leave it all in there. We'll write the last two expressions here. This is 70 plus 60 divided by 2, and the width of that one is 1. And then the last one is 60 plus 55 we're going to divide that by 2, and the width of that one is 2. And then that whole thing will, will divide by 8 afterwards. So if we work that out, that's going to give us, we'll put one intermediate step in here. Uh, if you work this out, you get, this is 97.5. This is 330. This is 65. And this is 115. If you add that all together, it is... 607.5. That's the area. That's the approximate area of that according to those trapezoids. And if we divide it by 8, we have that the average is 75.9, roughly. That's the average temperature. So somewhere in here, just above 75, that's the average temperature. So more or less what you're doing is you're you're taking this area up here and you're kind of filling that that in down there and seeing where that average is. Now, while we have this here, there's this one last part here we're going to think about, and that is, what's the value of this expression here, just for thinking about what it is? It says the integral of the derivative of temperature. The integral of the derivative of a function is more or less the function itself. The fundamental theorem of calculus says that this expression right here, integral from 0 to 8 of the derivative of that, is just the temperature at 8 minus the temperature at 0. So in other words, it's 55 minus 100, or in other words, it's minus 45. The integral of the rate of change of a function is the net change in that function. So the integral of the rate of change of temperature is the net change in temperature over the wire from the beginning to the end net change in temperature. So, in other words, this temperature of this wire dropped 45 degrees. It dropped 45 degrees Celsius down from the beginning to the end of that wire. All right? So that is using trapezoids to estimate area under curves, and along with a few fundamental theorem of calculus uh, connections there in that second contextual example. Hopefully you got something out of it. Mm -hmm.